All right, so this is what it's all come down to. Day seven of our Becoming a Better Hair Cutter in Seven Days Masterclass. I hope you guys enjoyed the last six days. Hope you feel like you've grown, built your confidence. I'm super excited to share with you this very last piece of the puzzle, which is putting it all together. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys an exclusive class. This is me cutting a bob, but we're gonna work everything from dry cutting, wet cutting, uh, understanding your vertical line, your horizontal line, putting everything into place place. So I'm excited to share with you guys this class. So grab a notepad because this thing is packed with information. Enjoy the class. Make sure you stick around to the end. I got one more message for you guys. Let's get started. Here we go. Today we're going to be focusing on cutting a graduated bob. So I'm going to walk you guys through um, some of my key tips to making sure that you get a balanced shape, uh, really work on that vertical and horizontal line that we talk about all the time, the sectioning of it, uh, and then there's going to be the fine tuning and the dry cutting uh, finish work. I'm going to be working off of a side parting for this graduation. What I like about cutting a bob uh, consistently all the time is the structure and um, the consistency that you have to have to get the haircut to be right. So it's a great technique to, um, to just better yourself by doing it over and over again. Once I get the hair brushed back, then I'll go through with a comb. I'll, brush, I'll comb that back. We can simplify the sectioning for a bob haircut because we flow from fr uh, back to front uh, and I don't really worry about those holes. Now, that seems a little bit crazy probably to some people because in beauty school, we're taught about the hole kind of when we're cutting bobs. But I'm going to teach you guys today that you actually cut the outer perimeter later and you don't have to worry about that hole. You just got to get the lengths where you want them at the beginning. There is going to be what looks to be a hole uh, as we cut it, but we're going to cut that off when we dry finish. So left-hand side parting. Just like this, I'm gonna come across the head. Comb that out. We're gonna go almost like uh, with the jawline a little bit. Side parting through. Then once I get back to that crown, I'm just gonna shift and then go straight down the center back. So it's just a slight diagonal line uh, to move me into that center back portion. Go here and then slide. Right down, center back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide a clip up underneath the right side. And I'm going to start by working on the left side. And when I'm cutting a bob, I really like to um, sit. Uh, most of the time because it allows my eyes to be more level with the work. So it just depends on what part of it I'm cutting. But when I'm working kind of in here, especially on the baseline, I like to see it at eye level. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by kind of cutting a guideline here. There's a couple ways you can go about it. The first way is to cut your baseline first, then graduate up horizontally. Um, that tends to leave less dry cut work, but also less creativity in the finish. Um, and I want to be a little more creative when I go in and do the finish work. So we're going to go in and allow a little more creativity. By that, I mean, we're going to focus on creating this line right here, this vertical line, and we can decide how much weight we want to keep or remove and build up our line. But we want to stay consistent in this line all the way through the haircut. Okay, so when we do that, this hair is going to get cut here, this hair is going to get cut here, this hair is going to get cut here. We're working that line. And what happens is you end up with a pretty long length laying at the bottom, which we can then cut into in the dry haircut. So not worrying about that length, worrying about the vertical line only. That's the only thing we care about in this haircut right now. You're going to want a scissor and one extra clip. That way you can take your sections and just keep the hair away, especially when you first start out cutting um, graduations like this. 
You just want to stay nice and organized. So here, finger angle. Now, this is basically 90 degrees straight out from the head. Um, at the top of it's not so much. That's about 90. But down here, so we're just dropping. We're gonna, our graduation is really going to start when that comb kind of leaves the head shape. So you can see, <laughs> not that much. If I place the comb against the head, where the comb starts to come away from the head is where the graduation actually starts because that is where it drops below 90 degrees. Now, the more I angle this, the faster that graduation is going to start, right? So no graduation till about the occipital bone, graduation before the occipital bone. It just depends on what kind of weight you want to build up in the haircut. You don't want to try start off building too much weight because if you do that, look how fast as that head starts to move away right up here, look how fast that's going to build a heavy shelf. So you want to think about what's your graduation going to be like when you get to this top point of the head. So I look at it right about like that. I want that kind of angle coming straight up through so I don't have too much graduation on the top end of this. So here coming out from the head, look at that angle, visualize it. And I'm gonna cut through here. When you wanna do a precise haircut, your brain and everything about you is gonna wanna tug this hair and hold it so tight so you think you get that perfect line that's not going to give you a perfect line. You really want to be light on the tension because that's going to allow the most natural fall of the hair. So I go from, I was here, and now I'm going here. And I'm just going to continue working my way until I hit the point where I'm following that jawline. Then I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to keep working that way. Comb this hair up and away. Now I'm going to comb this hair back to the guideline and I'm going to be just over that previously cut section as my guide. So there's my angle, my guide. So this parting starts to mimic the jaw. Once it gets to that point, everything else is just going to kind of come straight back. I'm going to continue this line staying at this angle all the way through now. So you can see how the beauty school hole starts to happen. But we're going to cut all this hair off in the dry cut. So once we get to that side and we start moving the same consistent um, partings, we stay stationary. Bring everything back. The more you brought it back, the more extreme that front angle would be. So there's nothing wrong about where you bring it back to. Just know that you can already see how far forward it's being brought. It would be even more extreme if I was bringing it all the way to the very center back to like section one or section two. Okay, so that's the weak side, the side with less hair, the part side, you can call it. And now the heavy side is what we're going to get into next. So now, how do we switch to stay consistent here? I like this rule that your thumb is always pointing in the direction you're going. So if I'm moving to the left, my thumb is pointing to the left. If I'm moving to the right, I no longer want my thumb moving to the left because it would be so hard to comb. So to get comfortable, I shift my thumb and point in the direction that I'm going. So as I take these next sections, you want to make sure that you don't take too much hair. If you take too much hair, that means you're going to create a lot of over direction to the guideline because the guideline's meeting in the middle, right? So when I bring this hair over to the middle, 
it might be if I took this even wider, I'd be grabbing this hair and it would be pulling way too far. So then all of a sudden you'd have an extra length uh, happening right here. And then you would continue your guide like that all the way through the heavier side of the haircut. And then when you get done with the haircut, you've got one side way longer than the other side. So that one little thing can change the entire haircut. Now this is too over-directed. So that is kind of where the guideline is stronger, but having that awareness of kind of where my hand is changes everything. This is the top of her head. This is the back of her head. So when we're talking the horizontal line, it's this line here, right here. I want to make sure that when I'm bringing a section of hair back, I don't over direct too much in the horizontal line because any bit of over direction or pull to this direct in this direction causes weight in the opposite direction. So I need to make sure that this line, if I'm pulling hair out from this point right here, I'm not over directing it here and cutting it and then pushing weight. And then now all of a sudden I'm over directing hair to that longer piece that I just cut. And now I'm pushing even more weight and then over directing. you got to make sure in your horizontal line that everything is coming out at the exact angle that it has to. And then the same thing with the vertical. Vertical is easy because you're following a guideline. So it's easy. Horizontal, you now don't have a guideline. It's got to be in the forefront of your head. It needs to be the most focused on that shape that you're trying to create horizontally. I tilt the head. I tilt the head, not because it's going to affect the haircut. The only way that it affects the haircut is it makes it easier for me to get my angle. The length here is so much longer than here. But that's because your line is this. And the head shape is moving away. So I'm getting more over direction on this piece. So this piece is longer than this piece. It's still creating that vertical line. I am bringing the guide to the new hair in this cut because um, it is traveling, but it's traveling backwards, focusing on a little more extreme travel. Uh, if I was trying to bring the hair over top of the gut over top of the new section then i would comb it underneath and up to it but because i'm trying to bring this down to the next one i want to comb it down if i combed it up it would move that guide too much so i want to keep that guide solid this will be basically with the jawline at this point kind of rest the hair as i comb it on the back of my hand helps me start to see that shape make sure that we're building a consistent shape Comb the hair in the direction I want to part it first. Then I take my parting. That helps me get nice, clean. And then the over direction on the sides. Her nose is right here. So you can see I'm straight back. Bringing it back. Really, this is where you could really end up with a kind of harsh line. So there's a couple decisions that I like to make. If I want it to be nice and light, I might even, to save myself some time from having to point cut too much into it, take kind of like sections around the head in pie shape sections like that and elevate this up just a little bit and just softly point cut that hair off. This is a great tip for not getting an over heavy line right there that you have to really work out. Pie shape sections, bring that up, elevate it off the head shape and point cut. You're basically following the guide from underneath, but you're just softening by not cutting a blunt line. You're just softening with a point cut. Oof, it's going to look good. Pivoting off this crown area. I'm going to work this all the way through. This is all going to be over directed back because we're working on a horizontal line that gets short to long. So it's becoming longer into the front. So my if I over direct back here, it's going to push that weight to the front. 
in the horizontal line, but also give me that softness in the vertical line. Got a nice little kick of length in the front. You can see here, that's our graduation. So you look for the balance in there from side to side on that side. I'm going to blow dry this off camera, get it all smoothed out, ready for uh, my prep work. And then we're going to go in and we're going to do dry cutting detail work. The details that I'm about to work on are still fundamental, but at the same time, it's where a lot of us miss, I think. When I was taught, you know, it was kind of all about the structure of the wet cut. And then the dry detail work kind of got left behind. It's not really taught uh, in beauty school when I went because... Um, it has nothing to do with state board. It's not about, pa it's about passing your test when you're in beauty school. So um, now getting into more advanced techniques, we're going to work on fine tuning this. Now, so you see how it kind of lifts up and goes over? That's because of the hairline. So when you look at the hairline here, how the hairline goes low here and then gets higher around the ear, the hair is following the hairline as we cut it. So you end up with that little bit of a hole. It's not a hole, it's just what the head shape is doing to the effect of how you're holding the hair. That line was never gonna live where it is. I'm going to cut that line up. So we are going to first start working that line in the back. And I wanna look at where do I want this line to be, okay? So and what I like to do is take halfway and think about that line. And then I'll match it and do the same thing on the other half. So when I look at this, here, I look at halfway, and where does the line of that hair go? And then that's how I'm going to cut that line in, just like this, across the hair. When I go into the hair, I almost like put the comb in, and for me, I can now visualize that line. And it almost puts a little dent in the hair right where I want to cut, and then I can visualize it. I just keep staring that line down and I use the tip of the scissor to start cutting it but you see what starts happening it becomes this beautiful graduation so here using the tip the tip allows you to not push the hair too much if I go in with a flat blade right away it'll start to push the hair now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm not going to go too far yet um, because I'll, I'll still be cutting into that. I'll work this line. That graduation wet would have taken me probably um, in the salon about 15 minutes to do the graduation. And then I'd spend about 15 minutes blow drying, getting it smoothed out. And then I would spend about 15 minutes on the details. So I spend just as much time on this detail work as I do the actual wet cut. So now it's important to get your line right as you continue through. So I put that little imprint in and I'm going to work my line across. So I'm actually going to be cutting all this length off and then I'm going to do, be doing the same thing on the other side. So if somebody had longer hair, a lot of times hair gets weaker as it gets longer. So a bob's a great haircut. Um, a lot of my fine hair clients have moved into a bob at some point in their life. And the best part about doing this line post wet cut is that we went through, graduated all through this, uh, added a little bit of layering in here as well, which when you layer this hair, takes away weight from the bottom, which allows you to cut a line easier. Um, if you had all that weight at the bottom and then decide to layer it later, it, it just makes it harder to cut this line. Before I mess with it more, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work some of this uh, weight as well to show you guys a few techniques to kind of lighten up some of those lines that you're seeing just from from the graduation right here just to lighten that area i'm gonna do a little bit of work in the sides i want to add some layering to this to add a little texture to it in the back here what is a line why do we see that line it has everything to do with um, elevation right so when we look at the line that we cut in the vertical so right here when I look at the line that I cut, it's inevitable that as the head shape starts to go kind of peel away and the hair starts to drop in elevation, that you're going to end up with a weight line in the back. So unless you shift your elevation as you do the haircut. For me, I like to keep it consistent, work that 
weight line a little bit later um, because I think it builds up the best shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'll tilt her head forward just a little bit. I got this little FSE clip. So it's a Velcro clip. Um, I love these things for dry cutting. So what I do is I'll take horizontal bit underneath where that weight line is. I can hold that hair up in my comb and I can slide the Velcro clip up underneath. Let me do this. And then I have access to that underneath really simple and it's not gonna crease the hair all up. So I'll come in here and I'm just gonna work point cutting across. And all I'm doing is softening those horizontal lines because that's all you're seeing in the haircut is those horizontal lines. So I bring them out. I don't wanna change anything. I'm not cutting hard lines into it. I'm just softening the lines like that. My point cut is going basically directly in. So let me pop over here. So when I bring this hair out, this will help you kind of see that horizontal line that I'm talking about right there. So I just go in and I, I'm almost vertical. If I was like this, it would cut a new line and that would not be good. That would mess up the haircut. So what I do is I shift this scissor vertical and then it just softens and breaks up any uh, heavier little dense pieces in it and makes the haircut nice and light. So I take this Velcro clip out. I can move up just a little bit on this haircut and then I'll slide my Velcro clip up underneath like that and grab another bit, just softening that line. So now I can go in that last little bit. And this will obviously be the heaviest. So you can go in like this if you just wanna soften it a little bit. If you need to soften it a lot, elevate it even more. See that line start to break up and you'll start to see that line disappear. And this just takes time and patience. You can see how I used to have that pretty strong weight line in the back, and now that weight line is diffusing. I do want to just take a little bit of extra weight out of the bottom, soften it up a little bit. And notice that I don't change, I keep my finger angle with the angle of the horizontal line. So instead, I don't take it vertical and start cutting into it. I really want to keep the integrity of, of that shape. So look how nice and smooth that looks compared to the little bit of weight that it had on it prior. So that's a good little detailing tip. Now, I want to try to almost make it a little shag-like in a way. And when I say shag, just really kind of textury uh, and have some volume and just some fun in it, right? I don't want it to be typical. So... Um, I'm going to go in, take a little circle section out of the top. All right, so I lift up this circle section. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deep point cut into this section. So comb it up like this, fan it out, and then I just work some kind of deep point cutting in there. And I'll work those point cuts out. So I start close to my fingers working, and then I just continue. Then I'll go kind of mid shaft area, and then I'll go through the ends. So now I'm kind of at my mid shaft area. I look for the dense areas, and then I catch those ends a little bit. So now I've got three kind of layers of point cutting texture. So now I slide my hand out, and we'll start to get some kind of lift in there. And you could do this as many times as you want. I'm going to do it through the heavy side. Still looks nice, but it's just a little bit bulky right here. So I just want to lighten it up. All right, same thing on this side. In the side here, gets a little bit heavier towards the bottom. So I want to, lay, I want to cut into it, just do a little point cutting, a little detail work. Now right here in the fringe, have a heavy fringe, want to figure out how to lighten it up a little bit. Let me uh, show you guys a couple tips on that as well. This side fringe... Whenever I want to cut a side fringe, I come over here and I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to cut into it. That'll give me a short to long line and allow this to kind of kick over like that. She already has that going on. So what I want to do is lift this up and now same thing, fan it out and soften into it. Guys, this is a technique that has nothing to do with bobs. You can 
you can do this fanning technique on any haircut. And now you can see how soft it just lays back. That's all you have to do. I'm challenging myself today to not, not use a clipper to define this line, but I probably in the salon would use a little bit of a clipper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little hot off the press. It's more for just controlling the hair, very wide tooth comb so that I'm not stretching the hair from where it wants to naturally be. So now I'm gonna finalize my line. So last bit. So now I'm cutting with my scissor flat because I already have the line determined where I want it to be. So I'm just dusting those ends. Now I'm gonna add a little product to it. It starts to really bring out all that texture that we put in this cut. You can see, mm, it's fun. What do you guys think? I gotta sit still. Look at that. I actually like it. I like it a lot. All right, guys, that's it. This is the seven days. I hope you enjoyed every single one of them. I hope you're feeling more confident behind the chair. Just keep practicing, keep working through it. If you enjoyed this seven day masterclass, the one thing I wanna ask of you is please reply to this email. I wanna hear feedback from you. I wanna hear what you thought about it, what you liked about it, uh, anything you wish would have been added into it. I want your feedback. I wanna know. Thank you so much for being a part of the FSE community. I'm excited to watch you grow to have you a part of this community until next time i'll see you on the next video thanks